All right, Reaperman here, back with a second video about the At Games Legends Gamer Mini, which is an absolutely silly name for any kind of a console that comes with a joystick that's 19 inches wide. But, as you know from my last kind of fangirl video, I absolutely love the crap out of this joystick. I think that for uh, for the money, this is uh, probably an 8 out of 10 joystick right out of the box. Console here, yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there. But first, let's talk some more about the joystick. So, since the last video, I removed my second dust washer. I uh, replaced the ball top with a bat top. I noted that it's already got an extra long shaft and I believe it's got a two kilogram spring already to handle the extra length. It could actually stand to be a little stiffer. I may try an, a, a stiffer one in it. Also I got the circle gate in. I got the uh, original octagate out. I know most people are probably going to be absolutely tickled pink with that octagate, uh, but not so much for me. Now these buttons over here, um, I kind of love these buttons. They're ever so slightly stiffer than the uh, the HAP IL buttons that I'm used to, but they feel pretty good and I don't know if the stiffness maybe is just them um, not being broken in or if they actually have a little bit stiffer spring or maybe a switch that uh, is more than a 75 gram um, unit in there. But they all feel really nice and uh, if you're used to American buttons from back in the 90s, these are going to feel pretty darn familiar with you. This is is um, probably without question my favorite joystick that has ever come packed with any system. Uh, but it came with this system. Again, we'll get there. <laughs> so on the sides, I also did some experimentation with these um, these little three contacts. The center contact is the common, and shorting it to either side uh, actually um, uh, triggers a button and I found that out by hooking this up to Windows. Now by the way this joystick does work in Windows and it works it's uh, through USB pretty lag free might even work via Bluetooth don't know didn't try but uh, I had some fun playing Jamestown Plus with this thing. Now this stick here comes up as a point of view hat as in uh, the little uh, the thumb stick on top of a flight stick so you may have some trouble with some games not seeing it uh, on a lot of arcade sticks like this they'll have a little switch that switches this from like the d-pad to the, um, the analog sticks and that kind of thing uh, this doesn't have any feature like that that I saw anyway so uh, you're stuck with games that see um, po point of view hat as a valid control option um, which a lot of them should, at least a lot of the ones that you should be using this on. I did notice that uh, Crimson Clover did not see this as a valid stick. But again, Jamestown Plus did, so your mileage may vary. Now, when this stick is in USB mode, it is still going to be flashing the little Bluetooth light over here that you may or may not be able to see. To turn the radio on and off, you push and hold the Player One Start button for a few seconds and it goes off. This is also how you turn the radio back on and into pairing mode. If you do not turn the radio off, it will be on all the time. I'm not sure if this thing can actually Bluetooth and USB at the same time to different devices, but uh, it seems an awful lot like it's trying a bit. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and turn this thing back on. And then we can have a look at uh, another issue with this. Oh, by the way, before we go too far, um, this thing works absolutely fantastic on the mister and it will not bind to the switch at all using either USB or Bluetooth. Uh, not that that was an advertised feature, I just tried it and I think mister is my favorite way to enjoy these. In fact, I've actually picked up a, a second one of these things just so I have another one around and, and wow, this is a great stick. Anyway, as you can see here, we've got the light in flashing mode. Actually, you may not be able to see it um, because this uh, this joystick is not currently bound to the system and it actually comes out of bind pretty much all the time because you're going to be power cycling this a lot. Also, by the way, this system um, does not have a power button. Also, it only has one USB, and you're going to want to actually keep your, um, your your games in there. Now, you can probably do a USB 3 hub. This is USB 3, um, but I don't think that's really going to be too much worth my time. Now, to get this thing to bind, you have to get this into uh, fast flashing mode in here, and then it's got a little uh, sync button up here, and you tap it once. And it comes up with a menu uh, where it's starting to search for things, and it's just going to sit there keeping searching. Uh, you can actually tap the button again to get it to move down to different options, uh, and then you press and hold the button to get it to bind. And it'll go blue and say that it's trying. Now it's either going to succeed or fail here. It goes about 50-50. Kind of hoping for a failure. 
yes perfect we got a failure so it does fail a fair amount of time and uh, once you do that it drops the thing out of search we'll never find it again and uh, you won't be able to get out of this menu if you're not USB in in some way so uh, that's uh, power cycle the console time and again to do that you have to pull out USB and stick it back in unless you have some kind of a uh, USB power switch that you bought for the thing and uh, there's a lot of things you could do with this with more accessories but uh, yeah we'll get into that <laughs> we'll get into that so come on we get this thing boots up here come on come on come on it's actually not terrifically slow for an Android device and as you can see we're still flashing rapidly so it's not going to sync so actually it may all right so we're going to tap this button and get it to hurry along perfect press and hold and this time the light is solid it's already succeeded now, the reason I'm not trying too hard on this console is it is laggy. It is variably laggy too, kind of between games. So part of that is going to be the Bluetooth, and for reasons that I'm not going to go into, I'm going to have worse luck with Bluetooth than you are, but it's probably not, not going to be great. But uh, the, the menu's lag is the menu's lag, but I'm actually talking about game lag. And uh, as you'll notice, the menu here, I suppose we could probably go across. It's tabbed across the top, and then it's got a bunch of options in it. Games are for the built-in games. Arcade Net are for uh, little games that you can play online. Actually, right now I'm offline because I don't have my Ethernet plugged in. Uh, you got Lobby here. This is for playing games online. Bring your own game. And this is a good time to uh, introduce the different options here. Now, I'm not exactly sure how add-on works because I'm using a, an application called Add-on X, which is a free application from the App Store. And it's called CoinOps X, and it seems like it'll allow you five launches while you're offline, and then it'll stop working. And I imagine this is the DRM that's protecting all of their little pinball tables and stuff in the App Store. Um, by the way, it's kind of neat that there is an app store but it's kind of a little poor that there's no screenshots or videos of the games or reviews or anything like that so you're very much buying things off of the front cover box art not so cool at games not so cool so anyway I don't know about the add-on file this add-on X is from the App Store and can only be launched offline five times. That means that this console here probably has a bit of a lifespan, unless I can figure out how this stock add-on thing goes here. Meaning once these servers go offline, I'm not going to be able to use this thing anymore. And uh, you know, it's it's neat for 50 bucks. Well, it's awesome for 50 bucks. It's actually neat for the full uh, price of 129, um, but. You know, this console isn't really the draw of the 129 pack. I'd say the controller is. Now, this Cloud Bring Your Own game is streaming off of their servers, and then local streaming is streaming off of your computer. I have not tried those because lag is already not my friend on this thing. But anyway, we're going to go and we're going to launch Add-on X here in offline mode. We're going to see what it can do. Now, there's actually a pretty good video by... Uh, Mad little pixel of all people showing you how to get this thing set up and it's actually pretty easy when it behaves and you're going to probably have to do it a couple of times to get it to behave. So as you can see you got the systems down the side. These are kind of filters that you can put on things here. So I've got the arcade, NES, Neo Geo Pocket and I've got some adult games at the bottom which as you know is one of my favorite genres. So you go in and you click on one of these and then you just kind of launch your game. There doesn't seem to be any good search option in the current firmware. I've seen some, some screens where they've got kind of a whole rebuilt kind of wheel looking interface and movies playing and all that. I do not know how to trigger that. If somebody wants to drop in a comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong, uh, definitely go for it here. Um, now, the quality of these emulated games down here, uh, they vary greatly um, based on the emulator. Uh, I just had no luck at all with the links. Um, I saw some minor um, audio video problems with Neo Geo Pocket Color. Uh, and when I was playing Dragon Quest Pretty, or sorry, um, 
Dragon World Pretty Chance, which is a game that, as you know, I, I play on stream on real hardware, uh, I noticed that it was very picky about button presses that had to be long enough to register. So it was easily possible to just say, uh, just say tap a button and have it not, um, not register for you. Wow, you will chew through your five launches of this thing just by fiddling in the menu pretty quickly here. So anyway, let's just go ahead and let's see these things. Now these are not terrifically great in terms of um, in terms of latency, and also on NES it seems that the A and B buttons are in reverse order, which on some things isn't so bad, and on other things is absolutely terrible. And I actually managed to scroll this thing all the way down to Super Con to try, and um, I, I died pretty quickly on this thing uh, just because of the latency and the latency. It can come from the Bluetooth. It is possible that USB alleviates that a little bit. Uh, it also seems to come from the emulation engine itself. Another place it comes from is this thing changes resolution a lot. It spends a lot of time uh, switching from 1080p to 720p, and uh, that unfortunately really screws up my streams and such. Um, but more than that, it engages TVs built in scalers, and that, uh, that kind of gives a little bit of lag too here. Uh, you know what? We're just gonna we're gonna go with old Battle Toads. And again, this is not a built-in thing. This is just some game that I loaded. And as you can see, it comes up, and a lot of these games actually do have custom bezels, and I think that is just absolutely slick. Now, of course, they don't play as well as they do on Mister. Um, like for example, I was losing lives in Super Contra on my first try at on the. On the uh, at games console and then I plug the same joystick into mister and uh, nope no problem got all the way up to level 5 before I got bored and quit so let's go ahead let's quit game another thing it'll do is sometimes when you quit game it'll actually just kinda pull you back into the same game like it double registers button presses just another thing I've noticed on it Anyway, let's get into the real games here. We'll probably actually call these up on the big screen a little bit later. But one of the games I was really noticing lag in, nice to see Fix It Felix Jr. there, by the way. One of the games I was really noticing lag in was uh, Neo Drift Out. And again, this is a game that I own, that I play on real hardware, and uh, my real hardware setup, if I'm honest with myself, has two to three frames of lag. This seems to have more than that on every setup that I play it with. It's just kind of hopeless. And normally how I say it is on racing games, you can tune out a lot of uh, latency, but that is not the case in this genre of racing. This is entirely reflex related. Uh, they're uh, here comes the corner racers, as I call them here. So we'll go up and we'll uh, kind of credit in here. Skip through the credits. By the way, uh, on the built-in games, I don't see any way to access dip switches. Well, I don't see any way to switch Neo Geo games into Japanese mode. And that's pretty important for... Um, uh, trying to think of it. Magical Drop 3. Uh, which is a spectacular game, but it's even more spectacular in Japanese mode. Where they have uh, voice acting for the different characters. Gosh, I just love these buttons, and I love that this power switch, this is one of those power switches that clicks down and then stays down. They're like it's a physical power switch that you're hitting there. All right. Now, another thing that I noticed, I think a lot of the uh, controller latency may be due to this specific controller. Oh, come on, game. By the way, this is a tutorial mission. You're supposed to finish this in about 10 seconds. Uh, as you can see, it does actually save my times on it. Come on, come on, come on. All right. And again, I'm very familiar with this game. I like it tremendously, but I have to play... Gosh, it's just... It could be the throw of the controller, but I want to say that when I hook the 8-bit dough up, it actually, via Bluetooth, it actually seemed to have less latency. And that's something that we've seen with other Android consoles. If you're familiar with the Ouya, you'll know that its built-in, well, its, it's packed-in controller was considerably laggier than when you plugged in, say, a PlayStation 4 controller. 
or I guess PlayStation 3 controller at the time. Ah, it's just hopeless on this. And again, this is the game where I can usually get to level 4, and I'm just getting frustrated, and I'm just, I'm just going to quit this thing here. But yeah, this thing, this thing also works great with Mister, which I think is the primary use case for this this um, controller here. And uh, yes, this the surface on this thing is MDF, as you might be able to see down the uh, down the hole there. Uh, the base on this thing is a single plastic piece for the most part. Um, this uh, the this panel here is actually attached to the top, but the rest of this all comes off with, in one piece, and there's actually no structure underneath. Uh, where normally on American-style joysticks, of course, it's a, it's a wooden box with a little bit of a frame in it, generally, or some kind of fancy joinery on the side. Um, still, you know, you really can't complain about this joystick for 50 bucks, and for the full 129 asking price, I couldn't even complain about this package for that, really. Now, I wouldn't buy this package for that because I'm way too much of a cheapskate, but, uh, but yeah, I've really, I've really been enjoying the last few days, specifically with this thing hooked up to the Mister, and uh, you know, I've spent a good portion of the last few days also loading up this little. Um, little flash card with all those games and trying them out and uh, you know getting a, getting a fair amount of experience out of that I will say that right now it's hard to say what is better as far as the at game systems because I know the at game the other at games flashbacks the arcade flashbacks they also have a kind of a rich aftermarket community and that's not going to be tied to an on, to an app that can be launched five times offline from an online store that may or may not be there next year. And it really didn't seem like the emulators were, you know, night and day difference in maturity on that. Um, so, you know, make of that what you will. Uh, but again, for this package, it's really the stick that's got me the most impressed with this thing. Anyway, now let's get this over to the big screen. Let's hook this thing up. Okay, and Reaper Man back again. We got this up on the big screen. I got my joystick rebound again, and I got this thing all hooked up to the network so we can just kind of take a look at that. Now, I have not spent a single dollar on their network, so that means I don't get this arcade net play, although it looks like I may, uh, I may have some uh, time from the purchase, like intro time, according to that little menu over there right above my head on the screen. Then in the lobby, let's go ahead and get into one of these and see what kind of action is in the lobbies. Whoops, press to start. Okay, it's kind of a little bit of weirdness there. So it looks like, yeah, so this is actually the same as it looked all of the times I've been in it, where there's apparently somebody in birdie try, and then all the rest of them are empty. So, you know what, I maybe join a game? No room right now, okay. Well, I guess I'll try creating a game. Try hosting a game. I'll just play it. I have never played Birdie Try before in my life. So now it's, I guess, okay, I guess it's spinning up a server instance. Oh, okay. Well, let's give this a go. Player one, that's a great name. I'm gonna be Ace. Because I already hit the A and I was not gonna hit the backspace. Okay, so this is a little bit of a vertical game, and this is oh this is an interesting looking little golf title. Really like these 8 and 16-bit golf games. The ones that are all timing based. Uh one wood, okay, yeah, yeah. So I guess I just hit the go button. I'll try hitting this other one. Oh, that was a terrible shot. I don't think it was that terrible, but uh, it was a terrible shot. Okay. Now, this being a golf game, this is going to be probably pretty susceptible to timing. Okay. Okay, game. Very, very speedy. Nice. <laughs> okay, so with a free account, you can still spin up. Um, you can 
still spin up gaming uh, online instances if there was anybody to come and join me. There is apparently a little friends list thing. There was a hint of a friends list thing. Honestly, I'd be expecting it to be more up here at the top. No notifications. Do I got any settings? Okay. So, yeah, this is that voice chat that they had mentioned. Okay. Well, I think my fun meter's pegged on that one. Now, looking at bring your own game, this I touched on a little bit earlier. If somebody can tell me how to do this, just USB add-on file, please let me know because I'm using this add-on X, which is uh, an App Store app, and it's protected by their, uh, their, their five times offline DRM here. And this is their cloud gaming and their local streaming. Now we can actually have a look at what's in their app store, though, because before it was just showing my purchased game. So come on, load. And as we can see, it's a bunch of pinball tables. Now, so there's, I believe these are exclusive pinball tables, these Taito ones. And, uh, okay, so I was thinking of buying this one here. Uh, it's got Darius, Rastan, Saga, Space Invaders, and you can't read the last one. Let's get it up here. Uh, Frontline, I guess. Yeah, Frontline. So this is all of the information you get on this. And when you go out, because I don't think you can buy through the console, when you go out to the store, you also get just this one like cover shot like there's no video there's no shots of the table so i actually went out to a, a youtuber i subscribed to uh, uh crow crow plays or whatever and he's got one of the uh the virtual pinball tables and he showed this off and weirdly three out of the four of these are actually electromechanical era pinball tables and i was really surprised at that now space invaders has a few more advanced features in it um, but Space Invaders is actually the theme I'm the least interested in of all of those. So yeah, they've got these these Taito pinball tables, Taito themed pinball tables, and the people that do them lean heavily into the electromechanical era. And again, we got these Zachariah pinball tables, Zakaria. I, I don't know, I'm not a pinball guy. And then some Gottlieb pinball. And these aren't for the most part the pinball brands i grew up with i'm struggling to see anything i think i saw a black hole pinball once in my life cannot remember ever playing it so anyway that's that's kind of what their store looks like now we come down here under settings uh they've got attract mode which is okay so it just kind of rolls through games that's interesting and you got my digital locker which is I believe this has something to do with their store because I seem to recall buying something online would um, buying something online they told there was mention of going to your digital locker in here flash drive X this is for setting up the flash drive and uh, again I may have mentioned this but there's actually a mad little pixel video that uh, kind of walks through uh, kind of a, a Kind of walks through um, partitioning it out and all that stuff. Uh, pinball settings. I don't have any pinball buttons, so I'm not going to bother with that. Um, I imagine there's no reason I can't play pinball with the rest of my buttons, but there probably is. And if we go under here to advanced settings. Wireless control deck mode. So one interesting thing about this is on the panel There's something called a control bus and I guess that's for future proofing it. It's probably just Just for plugging into future systems, and I wonder if that is part of it there and uh, This is server locations and network testing. This is probably troubleshooting for the cloud gaming Which I'm not going to try because I have a bit of trouble with lag on this thing Let's go. Uh, let's go into a game here now. One thing that I'm noticing is there's that little um, uh, that little uh, cup with a circle around it. I believe that means that there's a high score table involved. Yeah, it means that there's a leaderboard involved, as indicated by that little icon above the um, uh, QR code there. And that's probably something you could shoot your phone at and actually pull up the uh, the leaderboard. Now, this thing has blanked the screen for a number of seconds, and miraculously, I've managed to maintain sync on this thing. 
I have tried everything I could to get this thing into Japanese mode. There are not a lot of useful things in advanced config here. This is kind of a MAME style menu. I guess we could try, we could try putting on the test switch. Let's try resetting this thing and yeah, that's just going to get me into the soft dip settings. It's not going to get me to um, like Unibios settings. I don't think this thing has Unibios on it, but I can actually do my usual then. Whoops. One more thing. Whoops without and then C to exit C to exit exit the calendar is correct neat dip switch one off which of course you have to do manually boop 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 And I think this is just going to reset the game for me. All right. Well, this is actually kind of a spectacular game here. Let's go into challenge mode, which is kind of a CPU versus normal. This is a puzzle game that plays so fast. It's like an arcade game. And everybody either picks Empress or World for obvious reasons. World is a bit of a meme because she only wears a ribbon. And in the Japanese version of this game... Um, all of the characters have their own voice acting, and the American version is kind of generic. Ready? Go! Alright, we just pull these down, shoot them up, pull down, shoot up, and then let's drop some more stuff on us here so we have some, some more combos that we can make. Boom. Boom. Oh no! Boom! And if you manage to defeat them with any level of speed, you get a bonus, but I didn't really have any level of speed there. And again, I'm sure you've seen the world meme as like an animated gif out there in forums or whatnot. This stick is actually just a thing of beauty, and in this game it seems fairly playable. Ready? The lag is not coming from the controller in this one. The lag is coming from my brain because I frequently forget what does what in Magical Drop 3. But kudos for at least including the right Magical Drop. That's something that the Evercade people don't seem to have paid much attention to. Because the Evercade people always do the raw Magical Drop version. Everybody just wants Magical Drop 3, am I right? Oh, I'm actually going to come over here with this so I can combo up. Boom! Bring down some stuff here, shoot that up. Yay! Well, that was kind of fun. A little quick game in there, and that was just kind of a tour through the, through the options and menus and such. And then let's back out of here, let's go back to BYOG, and let's have another look at that thing via add-on X. And again, I'm expecting this to blank my screen at any moment here. Let's look at a turbo graphics game. Let's do Airzonk because it starts with an A, and scrolling through this list is a little bit painful. I've seen people with better kind of menu systems... Please, if somebody knows how to get those wheel menu systems, uh, chuck it down in the comments because I failed miserably to give myself that. It may be like a firmware version upgrade thing broke it. I don't know. But I do know that about a third of my flashcard are these uh, movie files of each game, and I don't seem to see where they're playing. Where I think they usually play in the background of the, the wheel selector. Gosh, I really love this controller. And you know, the, the plastic tub doesn't really feel so cheap when it's in the lap. They put the money where they needed to, and that was right into this, this MDF top and these, these nice buttons here. Uh, I'm just going to go it alone. Oh, start.
Yep, and that is indeed Air Zonk. Since I don't own this game, I can't really comment on the performance. Uh, that's a power-up of some kind. Okay. Like, I don't know if it's playing right. I do know that I'm having a minimum amount of fun, so yay. So let's go ahead and let's switch our system over and get this thing plugged into the mister because that's where this thing really shines. All right, and Reaper Man back, and we have actually the mister up, and this is really where this controller is going to shine. It is a very competent system, and it is a very nice controller to use with it here, especially for the price at 50 bucks. It actually, 129 isn't a terrible price for this controller, but I would expect it to be no more than 80 on its own. So let's go ahead and let's start a game up here and uh, just kind of watch me lose Super Contra, as you've seen many times in the past. Um, but my hand should at least know pretty well how the first few levels of this thing work. And I will try and get the machine gun here so that you don't have to listen to me clicking so much. And yeah, this is this is this feeling good here. I will say that it it didn't feel nearly as good in the uh, bring your own game section of the. Uh, at games legends mini here gamer mini whatever the heck it's written on the screen at games comes out with so many systems i just uh kind of lose track but yeah this feels really good on the mister it's really it's the buttons that sell this controller more than anything it's nice to see something with american buttons because the, the San Juan JLF stick isn't completely hopeless. It's just not my favorite thing in the world. But the buttons that San Juan produces, now those those are hopeless. There's, there's no improving them outside of removing them for really just non-Japanese style buttons. Ah, we're going to go with spread gun. Sorry, you guys are going to have to live with some, uh, some clicking here. Duck! Yeah, this feels so good. Boop. And we'll go up in here, hose those guys off. Duck. Hose that last guy off. And helicopter time. Now, personally, this helicopter is... I'm used to it being more green than brown, but that's not really the mister's fault, and that's definitely not this controller's fault that I'm used to a different palette. Boom. And level one is done here. And this this is just spectacular on the mister. Uh, my hands just know the way. There doesn't seem to be any lag with it. And it feels pretty good. So I think this is where I'm going to keep this controller and its partner, which I believe actually got delivered during the filming of this thing. But I will, uh, I will have to go outside and check that. Nope. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's a good system here. As I missed one of the spread guns, but that's okay. Yeah, so before I bore you with yet another long play of Super Contra, uh, I think I'm just going to have to wrap this one up and say if you can get the system on sale or have 120 some bucks sitting around and want an arcade system that, or want an arcade stick that, that reminds you of little bit more of how American arcades used to play this is actually a pretty good option and these days for American arcade sticks it's, it's pretty much about the only option so I guess until next time Reaper Man out anyway let's go all the way back to games and have a look at the, the 99 or one uh, it turns out it's actually 100 built-in games here um, oh I keep fiddling around with my dust washer because because whoever assembled my controller actually gave me two dust washers, so I kind of just constantly fiddle with them. So um, it seems like these are either arcade or console games, like Aladdin here seems to be pretty firmly the Sega Genesis version. Uh, Bang Beads, a Neo Geo game, uh, so is Andrew Danos up here. Uh, I do own several of the games in this stack, so let's move on to page two, and that's, uh, let's guess this with uh, R2 here. All right, so this is page two. 
We've got Chack and Pop, Buzzle, or, uh, Bubble Bobble, Breakers, Breakers Revenge. Those two fine Neo Geo games. We've got Burger Time, which is, they tend to be licensing that out a lot lately. And let's move on here. Congo's Caper. You know, there's a lot of just kind of obscure games. Uh, Drift Out 94. I do kind of wish there would have been Neo Drift Out because I tried this. This is the first game I tried was Drift Out 94. And I got to say, I wasn't the most pleased with it, especially since I'm a big fan of the original Drift Out. And I'm a big fan of Drift Out on the Super Famicom. And I'm a big fan of Neo Drift Out. So, big fan of the series. That was probably not the game to pick. Got Elevator Action Returns up there. That's an okay one. And Fix It Felix Jr. I bet that, I bet that's the Genesis homebrew. Uh, I will have to take a look at that at some point in this stream. Uh, let's see, Gate of Doom. Okay, Ganryu. Um, I believe that's a Neo Geo game there. Uh, let's see, Jalco Big Rally Run. Okay. And Joe and Mac, they seem to be licensing themselves out a lot with the Data East stuff. I'm really surprised to see this uh, kind of Disney Virgin interactive stuff like The Lion King and Aladdin. I'm kind of surprised to see that. Oh, there is Neo Drift Out. New technology, so I own this one. I also own Magical Drop 3 The Tower. Uh, this is kind of an interesting game that I have lots to say about, and I should probably just kind of wait until we try that one out. It might be the first game we try here. Um, now, as far as the stick goes, I'm going full wireless. I, I want to give it every opportunity to piss me off with lag, which tends to be what um, uh, emu consoles tend to do. So, uh, like I said, this controller here is probably going to wind up being a Windows controller for me. I really, I really just like it. I like this kind of chrome piping around it. I just like everything about this darn little thing. I'm just fangirling hard on this thing. And let's move on to the next page here because I don't see anything worth talking about here. I'm not a big Rastan fan, sorry. Uh, let's see here. Space Invaders, Space Invaders Deluxe, Spin Master. Interesting. So here's a Neo Geo game that I also own. Uh, okay. Uh, moving on here. Oh, it looks like Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back, Super Return of the Jedi. They must have done a deal with Disney, I guess, huh? That would explain the uh, the Aladdin, Lion King, and, and some of the Star Wars. Um, clearly, they didn't do a, a deal with um, uh, Atari or Sega, who also have Star Wars arcade games that are, mm, well, actually arcade games first, and also a little bit, a little bit more well loved. Uh, so there's Top Racer and Top Racer 2. That is the European name for Top Gear, apparently, uh, as far as I know. Uh, we got Tetris 2. There are some other Tetris lights over here, Tetris and Tetris Plus. I'm not sure whose Tetris this is. We may check that out, may not. Zombies Ate My Neighbors, an interesting kind of LucasArts game, if I recall. 